Greetings and welcome to Let's Play Gothic. This is uh, one of my favorite RPGs, and uh, I'm gonna doing it a little bit like um, what I did with uh, Arx Visualist. But first, I'm going to go into the game and just explain a little bit about it uh, because this one does not have a character creation at the beginning of the game. So uh, I will go into it and explain a little about the different things uh, for those who are interested. If not, then go to the next video where I will start the game. And here we are inside the game. Or oh, looking the old camp. Anyway, I have my control set to uh, alternative, so I move at WASD. I can turn on Q and E, or I can use the mouse. This game is made so if you want to interact with anything, you have to press the use key, either the mouse button or the control, mid alternate controls, and forward. That can be a little hard to get used to, but. Once you've gotten used to it, it's not so bad. You might be able to hear I'm still a little bit ill, but I've decided to record anyway. Now, let's just start going over the character sheet here. The guild is not that important. It just tells you which camp you are a member of. Some of the guilds have special uh, have access to uh, special trainers around. For example, mages can be trained by the mages in uh, use of magic. Um, the level, well, that's the level you are. You actually start at level zero, so I have uh, actually leveled up with this character. Um, to level up, it cost uh, 500 XP for the first time, and then 500 per uh, extra level. So that should start cost 500, then. <laughs> 1,500, then the price would be uh, 3,000 to uh, 500 times uh, uh, the level that you're about to raise to will be the cost between the levels. And every time you level up, you gain some skill points, which can be used to learn all the other things. Um, there will be trainers around the world you need to talk to, and then will then. Uh, Train your skills for a certain uh, change your uh, for a certain uh, costs. So one hand it cost uh, uh, ten for the first time and twenty for the second time. Um, gaining points in strength, dexterity, mana that cost uh, one per time. Life is automatic gain when you level up. You gain twelve hit points per level. Now. Strings is used uh, for using melee weapon and it's added to damage for melee weapon. Dexterity is used for rated weapons. And as we call, it's not added to damage, so uh, melee weapon will often do more damage than rated because you add your strings. And mana is used for spells. Uh, protection. Well. Every armor uh, and some items give uh, protection against something. You can see down there there's weapon, arrows, fire, and magic. And, well, they more or less explain themselves. Weapons are melee weapons, arrows are uh, ranged weapons, fire and magic are different type of uh, medical damage. Anything that's fire will give fire damage more or less, and anything else will do magic damage. Skills. When it comes to the skills, uh, there's two things. First of all, is how you use the weapon. When you level up a uh, weapon skill, you will change the way you are holding it and the way the rap, how rapid you can strike with it. Also, you will gain a critical hit chance. Uh, five first, and then ten. All weapon skills can have uh, three stages. There's the unskilled, which they start on. Then there's a trained and a master skill. And the uh, critical hit chance will be 5% and 10% for the latter ones. And uh, critical hit basically just uh, add the weapon damage again. So if you have a weapon that does 5 damage, when you critical hit, you'll do 5 damage more. 
uh, feeling skills, these are not that important. I have actually never really found a use for pickpocketing, especially because you can just knock people out and take it from them that way. They get more useful in the later games. Open locks, well, basically what it does is um, lowering the chance that a uh, a lockpick will break if you do the wrong combo. When opening a lock, you will have to do a combination left and right. Um, and every time you fail this combination, there's a chance the lockpick will break. The more trained you are in uh, open locks, once again, just like the fighting skills, there's three stages. The more trained you are in it, the less uh, likely the lockpick uh, is the lockpick will break. You still have to start over in the sequence, but the lockpick won't be wrong. This is uh, good if you don't want to save scum. Uh, if you do save scum, then you can just go through uh, the lock until you know the combination, then load and do it again, because all locks have the same combination. I will not save scum in this, so I will probably take up in home locks. Uh, then there's magic. Magic is divided into six circles, uh, and they have then uh, rune stones attached to each circle with different spells, and you cannot use a rune stone until you have learned the appropriate circle, and the circle are in order, uh, kind of like levels. So. And of course, they will get more expensive as uh, the higher circle goes. Um, there's only two types of mages that will have uh, access to all six circles. And if you really want to be a mage, you have to join the old camp uh, because you will get it's the earliest of the two uh, mages that will get access to the six circle. You have to play through most of the game if you want to join. The other uh, one, and the last one, the ones who will get earliest access to uh, magic, will only be able to train you to uh, circle 4. Now, special skills. Sneaking will allow you to sneak, which uh, can allow you to sneak into buildings. Going into buildings, normally if people see you, they will uh, basically tell you to get out, and if you don't, they will attack you. But this will then allow you to sneak into buildings without awaking its occupants or uh, having people see you do it uh, if they are standing with their backs to it. So it can be pretty hand. Acrobatics uh, will allow you to jump further. It will change your jump animation. Mm, it's not really that useful. It's something you can take if you want to have a bit of fun, and uh, you will also jump a bit further uh, and move a little bit faster if you're jumping, actually. But, all in all, it isn't really that useful. And, that's the jump without a acrobatic. You do that at all. Um, you can also climb up places. I can go over here to show it. See if I can come down from here without dying to show it off. Alright, it's over here. Basically when you're standing near a ledge and uh, press, the, uh, press the jump key and it does this, it means you will try to climb up. And can be pretty handy to get up in uh, higher places, but it's only when it does that it uh, is possible. Now, when it comes to the inventory, I have a sword equipped. To um, equip weapons in uh, your inventory, you have to press once again the use key, and then up, um, and that will uh, equip it or unequip it. To drop it, you have to press down. You can also press left and right, that is used to transfer from one inventory to another, for example a chest or a shop. Uh, shopping is done by a barter system in which uh, uh, the weapons you sell are only half value. So when you sell them uh, to somebody, they will only take half value, but you move them to a separate uh, slot, they have you can see your inventory, their inventory, and it has a little area in the middle for what you want to sell, what you want to buy. And then 
you have to offer equal to or greater value um, in order to make a successful trade. You can use basically anything in your inventory to trade with. There's not something like gold or something uh, that you need to use. As long as it has a value, and even if it don't, it will they will just take it anyway, but don't care. When it comes to armor, as you can see, I have some digger stress here. Um, he will actually just put it on top of his own cloth, which look a little bit silly with the line cloth, but it's basically equipped the same way. And this one, you can see, have ten against weapons and five against fire. So basically, uh, it's good against weapons and a little bit good against fire, but. I shouldn't expect to uh, combat any archers any soon, anytime soon. Um, the armors are basically often linked to a guild, so you will only have access to a certain type of armor. Basically, each type of guild has the same uh, type of armor uh, stat-wise, so it's not that bad. But the main thing is the aesthetic choice. So, if there's armor you uh, really don't like and don't want your character to wear, you should probably not join that guild. At least until uh, later in the game, you will have to carry that armor. Uh, well, you don't have to, but it will be greatly useful because they will probably have better stat than anything else you find. Also, when it comes to weapon, it is sorted by uh, strengths. Here I have melee weapon first, the better the melee weapon uh, damage wise, uh, the higher it is here, and then comes the uh, ranged weapons down here. Ranged weapons, you can equip a melee and a ranged weapon. Ranged weapons function uh, basically just by pressing the use key and then forward to shoot. Melee weapons are a little more complicated. Um, they are used by well, pressing space uh, draws a weapon, or the equivalent number key, as you can see, one for s the melee weapon, two from the shot, uh, from the shot bow here. Space will take your last equipped melee weapon, so it will always take the sword here. Anyway, when fighting with a weapon, you once again you hold down the use key. And then you can either press left and right in order to make these kind of swings here. Or you can press forward, make these forward moves. The better you are with the weapon, the faster the left and right will uh, basically come. And the forward will start to go into a combo. You'll probably see that later with some of the weapons. And if you press back, you will block. Uh, pretty simple. And now we have the spells. Spells basically screw, uh, scrolls and uh, runes. I cannot use any runes here as I don't have any circles. But scrolls basically function similarly to um, runes. You equip them once again by pressing up and the use key. See it got a 4. 3 is the last use spells. 4 and then onwards up to 0 are... Um, Basically just spells you can store, so you can have start one weapon, one bow, and then uh, spells for the rest. And when you press this one, I only want spell equipped, but if you hold space down, you can basically cycle through all the weapons you can draw. Here it will normally give you a wheel, you can cycle through of all the spells. Here down he will draw a sword, and here he will take the bow out. As you can see. Now let's get back to the spell. Basically casting spells is just like firing arrow. So you press control and forward and he will cast a spell. This is the light spell. It will light up a small area. Well, artifacts are basically uh, rings and amulets that will give you different abilities like this one gave me 5 to strings and this one gave me 5 to dexterity. You can only carry two rings. So if I try to equip any of these, it simply won't do it. You have to unequip one and then equip another one. Food. Well, 
These are things that can be uh, eaten to get some uh, benefits. As you can see, I'm a bit wounded down there. I'm going to check here to check the exact amount. Since I have taken on the ring, I've gotten some ex some uh, hit points. So let's eat this one, giving me 10 health. That's basically it. There's no limit on what you can eat or drink. You can just basically go to town with it. This one I will return to in just a little bit. Well, potions works just as food, except uh, these are a lot more potent. And I will uh, be a unique one among these. There will be permanent buffs. Uh, potions will give you a permanent buff to uh, strength and dexterity or mana, health. And there's also speed potions that will make you run faster. What I have here is an essence of health, which give 50 hit points, uh, life point bonus. It will heal you 50 uh, hit points, and it is basically uh, the weakest of the healing potions. There is a joke healing potion called Quick Heal, who takes uh, that takes forever to drink, uh, and there's only one in the game. So here we have a map, a book. And the scroll. You will start with this this scroll in the in the game. <laughs> I will probably just read this aloud uh, so people can see it because I'll probably not open it in the game. Or well, I'll have to see about that. Anyway, the map you use it as you use <laughs> all uh, items. Control and forward. This is a map of the new camp. We will get there a little bit later. A book. The same. If you then open this little page with different descriptions, for example, a description of the light spell. And uh, there's also a description of ice bolt and fireball. This is basically the first spells you will get in the game if you choose to buy them. Um, and find there's the scroll. Scrolls will open like this. And give you a little note here. This is the miscellaneous inventory. There's all down here. That's the equivalent of uh, gold. As you can see, they are costing uh, uh, one in value, which means they are they're not halved. Um, so you can easily use those to buy and sell stuff as. They will never dec decrease in value. Lock picks, uh, pick locks here are used to open lock chest. Without one, you can't open it, and if it breaks, it will disappear. Torches, used to create light. Just use like normal. <laughs> uh, you use normal stuff in the inventory. Coins, well, these are basically worthless. There's no real reason to carry around them, so you might as well drop them. This is just vendor dunk. Uh, you basically use it to sell it, and this is actually used for a quest once. Other than that, well, you can eat it if you want to or sell it. It has no real purpose. Now I'm just gonna go down here without dying, hopefully. Because there's a chest down here. Uh, it's over here. Yes, so I can show up the inventory here. This is when uh, you are putting something in the chest. If you're dealing with uh, another inventory uh, shop, it will see a little bit different. You can basically by pressing uh, the use key and uh, the Q key, you will move, move run over. And of course, back if you press the A key here with alternative keys, the left key, you will move 10. The use key and left key, if you press the use key and shift, and then move over, you will move over a hundred. Pretty simple. And now NPCs 
when talking with an uh, NPC here, you basically do like you do use anything else. And then you enter this one. This is a trainer. He can. What else can you tell me about hunting? A lot, but it'll cost you more than a beer if you know how. You can take the cr at least. It here is a trainer. You can see I can learn to skin reptiles. You can also this is the part that isn't really showed by your character scat learn to skin creatures. Uh, so you get uh, loot when you pick uh, when you kill them. Which can then be sold basically. This is way too expensive, so and you navigate uh, uh the dialogue wheel the way you normally would. Now when it comes to interacting with objects around the world, like that one, you basically do like anything else. There's a few things that can be interacted with. Some of them does require a, a certain item. Most of them is just pointless things. Let's get up here. But there is a few that uh, is really good. For example, forging. You can forge on weapon, but I'm gonna wait with that because that's basically explained in game. You can also over here cook the raw meat that I said I will return to. You basically uh, have to stand right, just sit down here, and then he will put on the meat, and it just need to touch the plate. Actually, just you can do it uh, really fast like this, and they will still be cooked. And they will then give a little bit more hit points and be worth a little more. And that's basically it I have to say about this. So, the next video I will start the game.